thrilled by the stinging wind in their face and the curves of the road beneath them. It was a celebration of 40 years of caring for our motorcycling history. It was also a tribute to the foresight and dedication of our founding members. Penrith. This is our campsite. As you can see, nice and quiet. Perfect quietness, Ernst. <laughs> Them bloody trains. <laughs> they just sound like bloody bees of motorbikes. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday the 3rd of September, Father's Day 1995. But lots of fathers and a few mothers were missing from home that day. They had instead converged on Penrith, New South Wales for the running of the 40th anniversary rally. Entrants came from all over Australia and New Zealand and some from as far afield as England. The local camping areas, caravan parks, motels and hotels were invaded by hordes of vintage motorcycle riders and enthusiasts. Bikes were eagerly cleaned and checked in anticipation of the week of motoring ahead, everyone wanting their machines to look and run at... So kindly lent to us by Andrew Douglas for off cleaning the little bellows and of course this little Douglas that Sid and Ron are doing some work on at present. The Penrith Panthers Leagues Club served as the launching point for the rally. For many of the entrants it also served as their evening entertainment and for some their home over the next week or so of rallying. There were five excursions planned. They would explore the rivers of the Hawkesbury and Peon Valley, hundreds of bikes and riders taking part in the rally. Altogether over 200 entrants were registered, representing over 40 clubs and the same number of bike makes. That's a bus to Syria, yeah? not what you call concourse, but I think everyone here, or anyone here would give anything to own this thing. Nine noon, with registration complete, the Mayor of Penrith, Councillor Pat Shee, officially opened the rally. Welcome. And I'd like to compliment the Vintage Motorcycle Club on having the good sense to have this activity here in Penrith. I hope that all the participants in this rally have a marvellous afternoon and I hope the rest of the week is enjoyable for everyone who participates too. Thank you very much. Rally director Dick Perkins then sent the rallyists on their way. In age-related uh, bunches, rangers and machines, not the riders. OK, we'll be on our way shortly. With the formalities over, it was time to gear up, start up and get underway on the first run of the rally to Warragamba Dam for afternoon tea. A distance of about 20 kilometres. No problem at all. A couple of ladybug tracks coming. Unfortunately, some of the bikes seem to get stage fright and refuse to sing. I bet there were a few choice words in this gentleman's helmet, especially when his toes were run over. Now, where did I put that motor? I bet this guy fits a starter motor next week. Finally, the last bikes motored out and all were on their way to the dam. There was an impressive line-up at afternoon tea. Most of the bikes made it without strife, but there are always casualties. 
Alan Lowe's matchless had to be trailered home. Catch was slipping, probably some grease from the gearbox, so I had to take it home tonight. It was running so well too. Have you been picked up? Yes, thank you. Harley Davidson. Gotcha. <laughs> Buggy over there? Douglas Mastiff. Never seen this one around before. Oh. I like these buggies. Afternoon tea gave the riders a better chance to survey the lineup of machines and catch up with friends. Hey, uh, hey. hey, you usually stand by the side of the highway and try and pick people up. Well, what were you doing there? Uh, especially young lady. What were you doing there? Uh, what were you doing? Uh, waiting for my old friend my David, yeah? but he never turned up. Eric Moore. Warragamba Dam is Sydney's main water supply built in the 1950s. It's actually younger than a lot of the motorbikes on the run, and most of their owners as well. Beautiful pump. Yeah, the stove pipe limbers. Very rare beast. I suppose the design was based on the FN. Nimbai, close together. There again, the bike, you put them in the top gear and that's it, you haven't got to worry anymore. Oh, look at this sexy HRD. Wow. Fancy follow us being that, right? Fantastic. Thirteen something about to take off. Yeah, yeah. Right. push that. Right. There she goes. Afternoon tea over, it was time to head back to Penrith. The run was just long enough to work out the last leaks and squeaks from the machines and riders alike, before the more serious runs to follow. The second day of rallying in a cold, clear morning greeted the rallyists for their second run. Today would be a trip to Moralia Park for morning tea via Windsor and Pitt Town. The riders would then continue on to Sackville to cross the Hawkesbury River by car ferry and then to Wilberforce for lunch. This would be a round trip of about 100 kilometres.
Not work today. Not work today, Vic. Michael Bendich is senior on his AKD, or two-wheel terror as he calls it. This was Michael's first motorcycle rally, and he was only doing it for the exercise. Uh, Jeffrey up ahead, making good time, he's coming about uh, 50 k's I'd say, he's going real well, setting a good pace, and we're getting overtaken by about a million of them. First stop for the day is Moralia Orchard, approximately 45 minutes out of Penrith. On the right we see some of the bikes coming in. This is where we have bikes to eat.
just here, Jeff. Oh, here they are. <laughs> <laughs> And so the rally reached Moralia Park where morning tea was served. This was another chance to walk around and look at the feast of machinery. New Imperial Twin, 1000cc, big one. A nice mattress with a Jap engine, 1912. This Douglas is a replica of the one written around Australia in 1924 by A.W. Grady to become the first motorised vehicle to encircle the continent. This feat was re-enacted in 1994 by its owner, Kevin Cass. After morning tea, the run continued north to Sackville to cross the Hawkesbury River by ferry. The rallyists were held up here as there wasn't enough room on the ferry for the 200 or so motorbikes, as well as the cars and supporters bus, to cross at one time. Everything was going smoothly until Sean Sherry's Rudge caught on fire during the crossing. This caused a certain amount of consternation for the other riders as they were packed like sardines onto the ferry. Sean's bike was nearly thrown overboard to save the other bikes from damage, but luckily the flames were put out and the rudge was saved from a watery grave. 
After the crossing, the bikes headed for Wilberforce Pioneer Village for lunch and then back to Panthers to finish the day's run. Unfortunately, cameraman Peter Flynn's triumph was not as lucky as Sean and his rudge. Looking a bit sore and sorry in the front end. She had a bit of a bingle with the car this morning. Sort of came out second best, Ben Fawkes. Top lips a bit bruised. Apparently he was trying to film and ride at the same time. That's it, isn't it, Pete?